Right, hi. Welcome back to another video and welcome back to my next camera trap setup. This is the first time I've been out with the camera trap since my near disaster last time out when I had a visit from a couple of cows. Those of you who watch regular might remember I had a couple of couple of nosy cattle came and made a bit of a mess of my equipment. Um, but to be honest, I, I I got away with it very, very lightly. In fact, I got away with it pretty much scot-free. Um, you may remember that uh, my lens and my camera housing had taken on quite a bit of water with the rain uh, after after the cows had knocked the, the front element off. Well, um, I got the camera gear home and I, the, the lens was my biggest fear because it had there was water behind the first two elements I could you could see like condensation behind the first two elements and as you turned the lens around you could see a little bit of water running around inside and uh, and I thought well that's doomed I thought it's 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 beyond help but um when I got it home I put it in a bag of rice uh, for about a week in my conservatory and lo and behold it it, it dried out absolutely perfect um, the autofocus still works uh, and everything just still works fine so uh, I was very very lucky um, so I, f I fixed the the front element of my housing on properly a bit more carefully this time and um, everything's everything's running absolutely fine and what I have been doing I made I decided to make myself a, a couple of housings for my flashes as well with winter coming uh, normally with my camera traps I just use um, some food bags over the top which have been perfectly adequate. Um, once in a while I have had one or two little issues with flashes when the when the weather's really been at its worst. So I, I thought I'll just knock myself up a couple of little uh, flash housings. Just like I say while the uh, winter's on the way just offer them a little bit more protection. So uh, all they are is uh, food containers. I think I think they're designed for spaghetti or something. And I've just uh, I've fixed underneath. I've got a little piece of plywood, and I've fixed a captive nut or a T nut, I think they call them as well, to the underside, and that's got a quarter twenty thread to to uh, to fit most of most of my fittings. It's a standard sort of photographic fitting uh, from your tripod, and that, that just screws straight into the base and uh, and then I can angle it I can screw this directly into the tree a nearby tree or I can use my poles uh, with a ball head on and uh, that's it it'll just offer a lot more protection for the flash I've just got a little piece of foam in the bottom and I got a little um, silica silica gel sachet just to keep the keep any damp that's in there out so uh, Hopefully, they'll offer a lot more protection for my for my flashes. And uh, I've painted them up just like a, put a, like a bit of green paint and a bit of camo on them. But uh, I'll, I can still put the sleeve, my camo sleeves, over the over the top of the housing just to offer that little bit more camouflage. And uh, hopefully, they, they should work fine. But uh, they certainly offer a lot more protection than um, than a food bag, so uh, we'll see how they go. So uh, I'm here today. I'm setting up, trying to capture some autumn colours, trying to capture maybe a badger or a fox in in some of the autumn colours. Um, I'm set up, as you can see, on this really really steep bank. It's quite deceptive. It might not look very steep on camera, but it is deceptively steep. And I had my trail camera out for about two weeks um, beforehand and I've had lots of activity from foxes passing through up and down. Um, I also had this little bit of footage of a, a fox being chased by a badger um, and then a few seconds later the badger came trotting back up the hill and then uh, just followed a few seconds later by the the fox. I don't know what was going on. They, they looked like they were playing a game of uh, a game of tick. I don't know what was going on, but there's been lots of activity on this um, on this path. And where I, where I'm going to set up is uh, I've got some nice bracken in the background, 
uh, some nice brown and yellows you know autumnal colors so, but um, I'm gonna have to set the camera because of the drop there's like a real steep drop on this bank I'm gonna have to set the camera up pretty close to the path um, too close I think for the foxes I don't think any any um, any uh, foxes are going to wander past. I might be lucky and get a badger to come past. I'll, I'll camouflage everything up as best they can. But uh, we'll give it a go, see what happens. <laughs> get the bit of stuff there, let's go. Did you eat? No, no food. <laughs> <Ooh. laughs> Gravity is trying to get me. Probably one of the biggest mistakes in camera strapping. It's not quite getting your focus in the right place. Doesn't help when you've got dogs wandering around here, there, and everywhere. Roger, you're in the way, mate. You're not helping. Got the lens set to about 24 mil. I think this setup's going to be critical of when I place this, the PIR sensor because I've only got a small area where the photograph needs, uh, where the camera needs to fire. I think I'll just drop it down, just the shade. I want to try and get all this um, bracken in the background. Right, up there. Ugh. Camera settings. Right, F10. 160th ISO 400. Let's give that a try. Right, flashes. Flashes are set up, trying to dial the exposure in. Zoom in, check for focus. That's fine. Alright, you just need to set up the PIR sensor. Oh, let's just cover this back up. Ooh. Bit of a daft place to work this, but right, I'll do get back up here now. <laughs> Apologise for all the grunting. I think we can have the PIR sensor quite close. I think if I put it at a right angle to where the sub, I'm hoping the subject will be. I'll get a more accurate, uh, more accurate detection area. I've just got a few inches where I just want it to, to fire. Um, and if you're pointing it straight on towards the subject, you've got a lot more leeway for error. Uh, sorry, a lot more, a lot more chance of error really. If it fires a little bit early or if it fires a little bit late, but if you put it sort of 90 degree angle to the uh, to where the subject is you'll get a much much more accurate response from the PIR sensor 
that's the plan anyway. Let's give it a go. I'm gonna go with a with a hardwired setup in the hope that I'll get a slightly quicker response speed than what you get when you when you're going wireless. There's not a great lot in it, but every little bit helps. Right, I got all the switches off bar number six, which uh, hopefully will. Well, it, it, it's meant to uh, wake the flashes before the camera fires. Just gives it the flashes a few, just a split second to fire to uh, come out of standby mode. Uh, sensitivity, I got, I got quite high, around about ten o'clock on the dial. Um, the time dial. I've got it just to take one photo. I don't want to go blasting them with lots of flashes. And uh, luminosity. Uh, that's going to be irrelevant really because I'm, I'm going to be setting it to fire night time only. Because um, judging by the footage on my trail cameras, um, it's all badgers and foxes. And I've had what I think may have been a, um, a pine martin again. Uh, I just caught the back end of it. It was either a pine martin or a mink, I'm not sure. I, I, you can barely see it on the uh, footage on the trail camera, but it, it's all nocturnal stuff that's coming through. So uh, I'll set it to nighttime only. I'll put number one, num the switch number one, I'll put that up. After I've made sure everything's firing, I'll put that up into the on position and then it'll just fire at night time then. So I'll get everything covered up, uh, camouflaged as best I can do a few test shots and then we'll leave it leave it and see see what happens come on smudge come on Ready. <laughs> you meant to walk like a badger don't you come back up no we just stay quiet no <laughs> go on yeah, you're too fast or you're too slow, aren't you? One or the other. Yeah, well, absolutely nothing. It's been out for two nights, and I have I haven't had one trigger. Either the equipment's not firing, or I've just had no visitors. So uh, I'll check all the equipment. See if there's any faults anywhere. Right, and I want to set this. This camera trap up, um, it's in a really tricky spot. I'm, I'm right on a really st steep slope, and the, the path which the animals are using is here. And in order to get to get uh, the shot framed up properly, I've pretty much got to have the camera on top of the path. And um, I think I think it's just a little bit too close for them. They're probably coming up the bank seeing the equipment and turning back and, and going up another way. I know when I set it up I had a feeling it was a little bit too close to co for comfort for the animals who were passing up up and down the path. I'll check my trail camera, see if anything has uh, has tried to pass through. Right, I'll have a little look at the trail camera footage. See if I've, if anything has passed through or tried to pass through. Oh, there's a fox again. You can just see the fox here. Now, see, see my equipment. 
and turn round. No, taking a diversion around. Like here's my equipment here. So like, it's it's as I, it's as I feared. I think um, the camera's just a little bit too close to the path. I decided to leave it set up for a few more days. I wasn't very confident about getting a fox on camera, but I thought I might get lucky and maybe get a badger or something else wandering through. Oh, there we go. First shot. The badger. Oh, and another one of the badger. Well, there we are. Just two. Two shots of the badger. Let's check in focus. Well, there we are. That's that's very welcome anyway. It's over a week. Now I've been waiting for this shot. take all the gear down now and I'm going to move it about 30 yards away um, on a spot that I've had um, some success before and uh, I'm going to try and take advantage of all the all the autumn colours uh, while, while they're out so um, I'll just say thanks for watching and I hope to see you again soon so take care bye